The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning program. I'm Tasso Gerard, your economics teacher of Upper Seed Art. Uh, we are looking at uh, lesson 19. And uh, before we continue with this lesson, we are going to look at the assignment we had in the last uh, session. We'll correct the assignment, we'll do the correction of the assignment. And this is the assignment we had. The question was, what are the major problems faced by commercial banks in Cameroon? That was the question. Let's look at the solution. Solution. Lack of confidence in the banking sector. That's one of the uh, problems faced by commercial banks in Cameroon. We had lack of banking facilities in most parts of the country. Some villages do not have banks. Inadequate collateral security. Uh, it's, most people lack acceptable collateral securities to get loans in some banks. We have uh, competition from microfinance institutions. The commercial banks they are faced with steep competition from microfinance, especially uh, credit unions. We have uh, high loan delinquency. People either delaying or actually not paying their loans back. Too much interference by the central bank. Regulations by the central bank equally at times tend to frustrate uh, commercial banks. We equally have uh, political instability, like we are experiencing in some parts of the country. It affects the bank uh, negatively. There are conflicting objectives. The bank's objectives, especially that of liquidity and profitability, tends to conflict. Finally, embezzlement of bank funds. Some managers may mismanage uh, bank funds or siphon the funds. Now we're going to the lesson 19 is based on the balance sheet of a commercial bank. We're going to use this plan. We'll start by looking at the objectives. We'll look at the previous knowledge, problem situation. Then we'll look at the lesson activity itself. Some exercises, application exercises. We'll end up uh, uh, with an assignment. The objectives. <clears throat> by the end of this lesson, students should be able to illustrate the balance sheet of a commercial bank. Equally, they should be able to explain the conflicting objectives of commercial banks. Previous knowledge. Students can explain the functions of commercial banks. Let's look at a real life situation. A researcher in your community observes that the high rate of loan delinquency has forced some financial institutions to go bankrupt, hence retarding economic activities. You are called upon to advise financial institutions in your locality on what to do to avoid bankruptcy resulting from loan delinquencies. By the end of this uh, lesson, we'll be able to 
get to have enough resources to resolve this problem, to attempt this, uh, attempt an answer or a solution. A commercial bank's balance sheet. What is a commercial bank's balance sheet? It shows the assets and liabilities of the commercial bank. That is the balance sheet of the commercial bank. Assets and liabilities. Now, what are assets? Assets will refer to the various resources owned by an institution. What an institution owns. Or what the third party has that belongs to that institution. While liabilities are the resources owed to others. Or what the company has that belongs to others. The assets, we will we'll take our assets minus the liabilities. It gives us what we call the net worth or the equity capital. That means our assets will be equal to the liabilities plus equity capital. Now let's look at a sample balance sheet of a commercial bank. Take a sample balance sheet of a commercial bank. This is a sample balance sheet. We're going to look at it detailly. <coughs> the balance sheet is um, arranged you have as uh, liabilities here on the left and assets here on the right. We will have to describe all these uh, items. Now, for the liabilities, we have capital. What about capital here? We are referring to the capital contributed by shareholders, which, of course, they expect dividends at the end of the season. And then we have deposit as a liability. Deposit here, we are thinking of deposit in all the various accounts. We talk of site deposit, talk about saving accounts, uh, large fixed term deposit. That is money that customers have kept with the bank. That represents a liability to the bank. There are other uh, uh, liabilities. Now, let's go to the asset side. We have cash in till. Cash in till or in the bank's coffers. That is, we're talking about coins and bank notes. That's in the keeping in the bank. Of course, which is the most liquid asset. We have balances at the central bank. We're talking balance at the central bank here refers to operational balances or current account balance. That is with the central bank operated um, by the commercial banks through which they can easily borrow uh, money from central bank. And it also helps uh, the central bank to act as a lender of last resort. Then we have money at call. Now balances at the central bank plus cash in till all together gives all the total, uh, uh, total cash of the bank. We have money at call and short notice. Now this money that is lent to discount houses or so money, money market within a very short period of time, overnight lending, most of it is about less than seven days. That is money at call, could be called at a very short notice. So it's equally highly liquid. Then we have treasury and other bills. Now treasury bills are, those are the bills that mature in 91 days or three months. That is like the bank lending to government. So after the, the maturity date is usually 91 days. And other short-term bills, all these the form part of the liquid assets of the bank. Then there are special deposits. Special deposits equally considered assets. Or better still, you can call them frozen deposits. An amount of money that uh, the central bank expects or commercial banks are expected or they are they are, they are expected to deposit with the central bank. The central bank uses this money to control the economy. It depends on the policy at hand. The percentage can be increased or decreased. We have investment. Now, investment here has to do with long-term investment in shares, stocks, and uh, yield interest. Sorry, yield a profit to the company. Then the, the last of the assets that we have on our sample uh, balance sheet here represent is uh, advances. Advances are loans. At the time they could also be our draft loans. This represents the most profitable asset of commercial banks. The highest profit they make comes from advances to customers. You give advances, interest is paid. 
Now, looking at the, this table, our total liabilities will always be equal to the total assets. So the balance sheet always uh, will balance. Let's look at the composition of the balance sheet, balance sheet a bit, a bit uh, of the asset rather. Composition of the asset. Let's concentrate on the asset side. Look at the asset again. Look at the asset to concentrate. Now, to the composition of the asset, before we get there, we are going to observe that the assets are arranged in, they are going, they are in a decreasing order of uh, liquidity. In a decreasing order of liquidity, the most liquid asset is bank uh, cash in tune, followed by balance at the central bank. And the last advances are highly illiquid. On the other hand, they are arranged in increasing order of profitability. Cash in, in till is the least profitable asset, balance at the central bank. It's not earn any interest. Money at all is less profitable, treasury bills, and so forth. The most profitable will be advances. Okay, that's it here. Yeah. So we said the assets are specially arranged in an increasing order of profitability and a, a decreasing order of liquidity, as we have seen. Cash is the least profitable asset, while advances at the bottom is the most profitable asset. We are going to look at some calculations related to the balance sheet. We'll start with the cash ratio, which is simply a proportion of the total assets that must be kept in cash. This is a formula. The cash ratio is, you get the total cash divided by total assets times 101. We want to get it in percentage. Now, what our total asset is considered is made up of cash in till, as I earlier explained, as well as operation balances at the central bank. So these are the two items that make up our total cash. Let's look at liquid asset ratio. It's another calculation. Which is the proportion of a bank's liquid assets? liquid assets holding to its total assets. This is the formula. Liquid asset ratio is the total amount of liquid assets divided by total assets times 101. Now, what are the total amount of liquid assets? These are the total amount of liquid assets. We have cash in till. Balances at the central bank, money at call and short notice, and finally treasury bills and other short-term bills. These uh, four items make up the liquid asset of a commercial bank. Now we are going to look at something else, the objectives of a commercial bank. We will start with the objective of profitability. Actually, there are three main objectives. Our profitability, liquidity, and security. We'll start with profitability. This is the ability of commercial banks to make more profit for their customers, for their shareholders. Of course, shareholders, their main objective is to maximize uh, profit. So, and they get, they get dividends at the end of the day. Profits, how do they get profits? Profits come mainly from Interest charge on loans granted to the public. That's the main source of, of uh, profits. We earlier saw it advances represent the main uh, profitable asset of the commercial bank. So when you give out loans, they make profits. Now these profits are not only meant to provide dividends to shareholders. Equally, it is the they, they need to pay employees, employees and take care of take care of other bills. We have the objective of liquidity. Now, liquidity simply refers to the ease with which an asset could easily be readily converted into cash within a very short period without any significant loss in its value. This is the bank's ability to make cash available on demand. That's how we can equally look at liquidity. The bank's ability 
to make cash available on tomorrow. We know that cash is 100% liquid. This is to enable the bank to satisfy depositors in their demand for cash withdrawal. Of course, at any time, those who have deposited uh, money with the bank, they have their various accounts. They can call around at any time to demand for part of their money. So the bank must make sure that there is some money that is there to satisfy customers' daily demand for cash. Now, we have the objective of security. Security. It is the ability of banks to ensure that all loans granted have guarantee of repayment. All loans granted have guarantee of repayment. That is, there must be collateral security, securities to cover all the loans granted. Collateral securities. But it's most often we're talking, thinking about uh, land titles, uh, life insurance uh, policies. They should be something that, in case the borrower defaults in payment, the bank can be able to convert into cash. So banks should give loans when they must have received some acceptable collateral security. That will ensure security of the loan. Now we're going to discover that uh, there are conflicts. The bank is going to will be faced with conflict in achieving these objectives. Now let's start with the objective of liquidity and profitability and see how, and look at we'll look at how they turn to conflict. Keeping more liquid assets, if the bank keeps more liquid assets, it means sacrificing profitability. If the bank decides to keep more money in cash form, in order to satisfy customers' routine demand for money. Then, everything being equal, they are going to have less money to give out as, as, as loans. That means they are, they are striving to achieve the objective of liquidity at the expense of profitability. Then, if the bank overlends, if they give out more money because they want to make profit, it will be left with little cash to meet customers' daily demands. So if they are very highly profit-oriented and they want to use all money to give out loans so as to make as much profit as possible, customers are going to be disappointed when they cannot get their money uh, at any time they knock at the doors of the bank. And that is going to bring down the image of the, of the bank. There's equally the objective of security that conflicts with profitability. Security conflict with profitability. An attempt to secure loans by asking for acceptable collateral securities will limit the amount that banks can grant, hence less profit. So what we mean here is that if the bank is too, is, has a very high security standard, always asking for collateral securities or shorty in order to grant a loan, then they will not be able to grant as much as they would have wanted, given that many people do not have uh, acceptable collateral securities. And they will not be able to equally make profits, given that profits are made when loans are given out. So that object of security conflicts with uh, profitability. How to reconcile the conflicting objectives? How can we're going to look at some ways that the bank could uh, adopt in order to resolve some of the conflicting objectives, especially liquidity and profitability? Banks, they should group their assets into liquid and profit earning assets so as to obtain a balanced asset portfolio. From the balance sheet, from the balance sheet, we saw that um, on the asset side, Assets were arranged in descending order of liquidity as well as increasing order of profitability. Now, to make that some assets were profitable, others um, to permit the, the, they were liquid assets. That is one of the ways through which the banks can use to reconcile those uh, objectives. Keeping a number of assets which can be used for liquidity 
and which at the same time are income earning in the money at call and treasury bills. Now, these are assets that can serve as they can be profitable, though not at a very high level. At the same time, they can act like liquid assets. Money at call, it can be called at any time, it becomes liquid, it equally yields uh, some profit, just like treasury bills. Now, we are uh, we are going to recall, recall what we've done in this lesson. We started by defining a balance sheet. And we said a balance sheet is, it shows the assets and liabilities of a commercial bank. Uh, we equally went further to look at what an asset is. An asset is what belongs to the bank and what people owe the bank. While we saw a liability as what the bank owes to others. Then we look, we had, uh, we saw the objectives of commercial banks. There were three main objectives. We saw the objective of profitability. We, we said banks are out to make profit in order to pay dividends to shareholders. Because shareholders, they're the ones that have contributed their money to set up the bank. So making profit is one of the main objectives of commercial bank and we, uh, uh, it was discovered that the main source of profit is through granting of loans. Another objective that we saw was that of liquidity and I, we define liquidity as the ease with which an asset can be readily converted into cash within a short notice without a loss in its value. Cash is 100% liquid. So the banks are equally interested in having cash available on demand so as to meet their daily customer's uh, demand. Another objective is security. All loans granted, the, the banks must make sure that all the loans that are granted are repaid. How do they do this? They do this by asking for acceptable collateral security. Now, these were uh, the points we had for the three main objectives. We are going to now look at some exercises. We'll look at some exercises. We'll start with uh, the first. Which of the following items represents the amount owed by commercial banks to customers? We have A, advances to customers, B, treasury and other bills, C, special deposits, and D, site deposit. So which of the following items represents the amount owed by commercial banks to customers? Now, what about owed by commercial banks? It means that we are talking about liabilities. And advances here represent an asset. Treasury bills here are assets. Special deposits, assets. Side deposit or demand deposit represent a liability. So the right answer is D, side deposit. Exercise two. Question two is based on a commercial bank whose balance sheet is as follows. We have assets here, only as the rather liability. Only liability here is deposits. Here is 1,000 million. We have cash of 80 million. Treasury bills, 320 million. Advances, 600 million francs. Now, our total liabilities, 1,000. Total assets, 1,000. You are asked to determine the bank's cash ratio. Remember the formula we have for cash ratio? The, the formula was uh, the total cash, in this case, our cash is just 80 million. It's supposed to be divided by the total assets. The total asset here is 1,000 times 100 on 1. If we do that, we are going to, it's going to be 80 divided by 1,000 times 100 on 1. That will give us 8%. So the right answer here is going to be A, 8%. Then we have exercise 3. Question 3 is based on the commercial bank's 
uh, whose balance sheet is as follows. We equally have the same setting, but the question is uh, different. What is the bank's liquid asset ratio? The bank's liquid asset ratio. Now let's look at the total assets. The total cash represents is a liquid asset. Treasury bill bills is part of liquid asset. Advances is not is illiquid. Remember on the balance sheet that we had, the sample balance sheet, we had cash, operational balances at the central bank, money at call and short notice and treasury bill. Out of the four we had here, we have two. We're going to work with these two. So take 80 and the formula for our bank liquid asset ratio uh, was uh, the total liquid assets divided by the total assets times 101. So the total as a liquid asset in this case 80 plus 320 that's 400 400 million francs divided by 1000 million francs times 100 it is going to give us 40 percent you can calculate that you're going to get 40 percent so the right answer is uh, c let's get to exercise four which of the following items from a bank's balance sheet is the most profitable asset. The most profitable asset. Advances to customers, cash in hand, special deposit, money at call, and short notice. The most profitable asset. So, so remember our balance sheet, the most profitable asset is going to be advances to customers. Cash in hand or until represents the least profitable or the most liquid asset. Special deposits are not uh, neither profitable nor uh, liquid. Money at call, short notice is more liquid than profitable. So the right answer here is A, advances to customers. What, which of the following items from a bank's balance sheet is the most liquid asset? This time around it's most liquid. Of course, it is cash in seal. Advances the most profitable, uh, the others, Special deposits, neither profitable nor liquid, money at all, less, less profitable, more liquid. So the right answer here is uh, B, cash in till. Now we're going to get an assignment. The information on table one represents the balance sheet of an imaginary commercial bank. Let's look at the balance sheet. We have liabilities. Site deposit 300, time is a million of francs saving. Time deposit 500, other liabilities 200. Yeah, that the total here will give us 1000. Then cash until is 80, balances at the central bank 120, money at call at short notice and short notice 50, treasury bills 50, investments 100, loans not given. Question mark there. Special deposit, uh, 75. Total, not given. Now let's look at the questions. Calculate the amount of money given out as loans. Given that loan, loans, we saw that loans here, the amount is not given. Uh, Roman 2, calculate the required cash reserve ratio. As the next, cash ratio. Roman 3, list two assets. That yield no profit to this commercial bank. Okay, that's where we'll come to an end. Our next session is going to be on credit creation by commercial banks. <laughs> Una tege majang matege ndom mane tambia ninya ne njubya yen ngani bana matege mot ngani la kiri watege ndong esetina bia dinkido mane tambia ninya ne njubya yen tam tama mote tam zabike tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne njubya yen